So, it's Hallie. Welcome back to Liberation. When we last left off, we were like, we had just chosen to work with Monica for the weekend, and apparently we're like right at the end of Act 1. Before long, everyone else is doing the same. I walk over to where Monica is to coordinate with her for the weekend. Ah, sorry, Sayori. This should only take a few minutes. Oh, no worries. We have to drop off some stuff at my locker and pick up some materials for the pamphlets. You can meet me by my locker when you're done. Sounds good. Hey, Monica. Hey, Callie. Uh, sorry if I'm butting in or anything, if you already have everything planned out. Oh, not at all. The more the merrier. Although... Monica checks to make sure everyone else has left the classroom before she continues her thought. I have to admit, I was kind of surprised you chose me. I, I mean, chose to spend the weekend with me. Oh, gosh. I know what you meant. There was no question about it. Of course I'd rather be with you. Erm, um, for the weekend. I mean, for the project. Great, it must be contagious. We both awkwardly laugh at this. It's one thing for me to get all tongue-tied, but seeing her equally as awkward somehow makes me feel better. At any rate, do you want to get together tomorrow or Sunday? Hmm, well, I told Sayori we should get together on Sunday, so if you're all right with tomorrow, that would work for me. Yep, not a problem there. Um, well, there is one problem, and he's a big one. Instantly, the lights go off, and Monica nods. Ah, uh, yes, I almost forgot. It's probably best if we meet at my place, given the circumstances. Yeah, I don't really know what would happen if you came within firewall distance of him. Probably best not to test that out. Agreed. It's fine, though. My father is away on business, so we'll have the place... Er, well, we won't be disturbed. Suddenly, my heart starts racing, and I can already feel myself starting to pers yeah, perspire. Damn, what is wrong with me? It's just a school project. That's all, nothing more. No, I've been thinking more about our whole situation. You too? I mean, you have? I mean, what? Monica flashes me a wry smile. That too. Well, wait, what? What I meant, though, was that I can't help but get the feeling there's more here that we're missing, you know? Well, that's understandable. Obviously, Mr. X is hiding something. We just don't know what yet. Monica shakes her head. It's not just that. I've been getting a weird feeling of deja vu lately. You mean like you've done all this before? Not exactly. Just a sense of feeling or like there's something I've forgotten. Something important. I'm not sure why, but this world feels different somehow. Like there's an external force acting on everything from within the game. And though I know it's likely due to the influence of Mr. X, I also can't explain why it somehow feels familiar. Console's kind of blinking out there. Just then, we both see the console begin to flicker for a moment before disappearing. After standing in sun silence for a few moments, Monica speaks up. Oh, what just happened? Was that the console? I can't believe it. Was that you? I've only ever seen Mr. X use it since I've gotten here. I don't know. I was trying to... or wasn't trying to, at least, I think. You think? Well, I'm not sure how it's possible, but in that moment, I felt connected, like I did before when I had access originally. Like, I desperately wish I could find the answers, but somehow, also already knew them. It's hard to explain. Ah, interesting. Anything else? Well, I guess I also kind of felt connected to... She goes silent. Her face flushes red and she looks down at the ground. Ah, I see. Monica nods slowly, slightly biting her lower lip. Monica, I... A anyway, we should strategize about our next move. We still have a thought or to figure out what it is that Mr. X wants. I'm caught off guard a little by the abrupt change in subjects, but I figure she probably doesn't want to talk about it at the moment. Right. I don't think he'll give me any more info now, as I think he's starting to suspect we're working together. Monica nods. Admittedly, I have a lot going on these days, not including this club and festival, but I will try to dedicate as much time as possible to research. Research? Monica nods again. If I can access the console, that would be a game changer. I'll keep trying, but in the meantime, knowledge is going to be our greatest weapon. I'll try to learn everything I can via internet about programming and anything about this game that might help us, including any mentions of Mr. X. That's a lot. I can help you. That's all right, Hallie. I think you should focus more on finding a way to wake the others. I don't know why, but I have a feeling none of this will be possible without their help. Uh oh. Well, I mean, if you're sure. But if you ever need anything, let me know. Thanks, I will. I'm not sure if leaving her to figuring ever, or leaving her to figuring everything out would be just leaving her to figure everything. Whatever. While I basically mingle with the others is a fair trade-off, but she seems adamant enough that I decided not to argue. 
One other thing, though, has been gnawing at me, so I decided to approach the topic with her. Monica, I'm going to be honest with you. I wouldn't bring this up or ask if I had any other choice. The time may be swiftly approaching when I can no longer return to the house safely. Monica nods again, this time more discerning. Yes, I've been thinking about that as well. Do you have some things you can quickly pack and bring with you? As it happens, I explained to Monica that I've been preparing for just such a situation almost since day one. Under the assumption that while I was in the house, I was under the watchful eye of Mr. X at all times, I would surreptitiously grab one or two things and put them into my backpack before heading to school. I had been stockpiling my locker with extra clothes, phone charger, money, and other basic essentials. Basically creating a bug-out bag in my locker. Oh, that's very clever, Hallie. Good, it seems you are once the bed, then. Well, that still leaves the problem of where to stay. Monica shifts uncomfortably. Well, I may have a solution to that problem as well. End of Act 1. Thanks for playing. <laughs> be on the lookout for news about the future of this project. Oh well, gosh, I didn't think it would be that abrupt, but okay. What would you like to hear about your overall Act 1 progress? This can tell you what you've made happy, which will be relevant to Act 2. Okay, sure. Great, let's see here. Gosh, you made Monica really happy. Oh, I think you may want to try and spend some more time with the Natsuki. Well, to be honest, you should probably spend a little more time with Yeri. I think you should definitely spend a bit more time with Sayori, even if you both just want to remain friends. That's it. If you have any paths less traveled, go forth and travel them. Thanks again for playing. Well, gosh, that, yeah. All right. Well, then we're going to move right along with the next route, then. Uh, I guess... Hmm. Who to do? Who should we do for the second route? Hmm. Yeah, I guess we'll go with Sayori. That seems fair. It's still skipping. Or trying to. Go, game! Or did I drop a save at the first poem game so I don't need to do this? Hold on, I dropped a, <laughs> dropped a save here. We don't need to do this. We can just get right into it. Yeah, alright. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go with Sayori this time. Let's see if we can find all the Sayori words. Cry. Uh, prayer was her, wasn't it? Yeah. Grief. Yep. Um, happiness. She loves all those basic emotional words. Uh, empty. Yeah. Hmm. Cheer. And, uh, oh, yes. Silly. Yeah. We're just batting a thousand on her here, aren't we? Good grief. Look at us go. Lazy. It helps that, like, most of the words are hers anyway. But I missed. Uh, flower? Yeah. Um, or, uh, play. Sing? No, not, not sing? No sing. It just didn't update it. Okay. No, that's fine. Uh, camera was here. Hmm. Sunset? Yeah. That's our button. Um, hmm. So close to like writing a perfect Sayori poem. I can't stop now. Music and uh, clumsy. We did it. Perfection for Sayori. Uh, I don't trust him. Is that what we said last time? Maybe it's not. Looks like the skip button's not highlighted. Besides, I need time and a chance to determine whether I can trust him or not. I'm not really sure, to be honest, it's possible, but I haven't gotten any indication from her that anything has changed. I can hear what sounds like a small sigh, but it's almost imperceptible. I see. Well, do let me know if anything changes. Her being aware or not would be good to know, just in case. And if she is aware, is that going to be an issue? Will the script derail? Oh, yeah, I'll skip his back. That's all that changed with that one. <laughs> I kind of want to talk to Sayori, but she seems to be deep in conversation with Monica at the moment. I guess I can just sit at a desk nearby and wait until they're finished. Sayori really seems in her element here. Her movement, her energy, it's like she gives 110% regardless of the subject matter. I start to feel that afternoon lull as my eyelids begin to droop. Between the excitement of the day and the restless night's sleep, I'm surprised I made it this far. I lay my head down on the desk for a moment to rest my eyes while I can continuing to listen to Monica and Sayori discuss festival plans. Our following doesn't seem really lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The 
festival is our chance to show off our mind with literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know. We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. It's with a realization that I suddenly jolt upright. That's right, the festival. That's when... Just then, Sayori and Monica both look in my direction, somewhat startled by my sudden movement. Howie! Is everything all right? You look like you just talk. Monica realizes her sudden faux pas and decides not to finish her sentence. It's partially my fault for concerning them to begin with, so I try to divert the conversation back. Oh, sorry, I must have dozed off for a moment. Ever get that feeling like you're suddenly falling when you, well, fall asleep? Hey, you think that's why they call it that? This puts a smile on her fa their face. Their faces? Well, at least for a brief moment. <laughs> hey, wait a second, you fall asleep! You can't fall asleep in class, that's not allowed! Wait, this is a class? I must have missed that. Does that make Monica the teacher? Monica giggles slightly at this, or while Sayori huffs a little. You know my mentality! I see. Well, my apologies. Ellie, are you getting enough sleep? Because sleep is really important, you know. I wish I could say it's because my roommate is a mysterious disembodied voice, which I know Monica would understand. But probably not a great way to introduce Sayori to the whole your life is a lie situation. Yeah, you're right. I guess I kind of stayed up late trying to write this poem. Just wanted to make sure it was good enough. Monica seems a little surprised at first, but quickly recovers. She either didn't think I'd take the poetry thing seriously, or knows I'm covering for something else. Oh, no, I'm super curious about what you wrote. All in due time. Uh, anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your conversation. Actually, Hallie, it might be a good idea to get your input on this, seeing how you're in outside third party, that is. Being that's not just this club in particular, but for the sound of it, clubs in general. I slightly wince at that last part. I know what she meant, but I couldn't help but take it a little personally. She's right, though. I haven't really been too involved in school activities, even back home. So pretty much all of this was brand new to me in more ways than one. Right, yeah, I'd be happy to help in any way I can. Well, I was just mentioning to Monica that nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. Hmm, well, we could always entice them with free food. Great idea, Holly. You took the words right out of my mouth. Siori is practically drooling at this point. What kind? Ah, <sighs> well, I guess we could... Siori and I look at each other with eye or wide eyes and let burst the first th thought that came to mind. Cupcakes! <laughs> Great minds think alike. I feel a tinge of red on my face. Natsuki would love to do that. Oh, you're right! Natsuki makes the best cupcakes! That works out perfectly! That wasn't why you two suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my grade of dummy. Well, I don't know about that, but people love free food in general, especially desserts. Okay, and also because I love cupcakes. Hee <laughs> hee. Cupcakes it is, then. I'm hungry. What else is new? Me. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I rest the side of my head against the wall while they continue to talk, feeling the gentle tug of sleep taking hold. I find myself smiling. I'm starting to think that getting pulled in here wasn't such a bad thing after all. I know that a more depraved individual might see this situation as some golden opportunity to impress four girls, but honestly, it's been really nice just having someone to belong and hang out with people that I get along with. Or somewhere to belong with. It. Sometime, or something I sorely lacked in the real world. It wasn't through lack of trying, at least at first. I would make a lot of effort to keep in touch with friends, to hang out, to do things together. But I found that as everyone else started moving on with their lives, making new friends or relationships, it took more and more effort just to maintain some kind of friendship. Eventually, I guess I just kind of gave up. For a good long time, I just merely existed, never really doing much with my life or making any concerted effort to improve. This was, of course, my own doing, and it wasn't until I had sought out therapy that this had become clear to me and what I needed to change, but it was, and is, still a lot of work. Here, though, it just feels so effortless. It's a little difficult to tell if it's just because of the way the game is designed, or it's because I genuinely have a lot in common with them, or both. But either way, I really find myself enjoying this time spent with them. 
Most of all, Sayori. She's always so positive and upbeat, even though I know that's not how she always feels. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Ah! I open my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. <laughs> sorry? Wait! Actually, I'm not sorry at all! That's your fault for sleeping again like that! Well, I forgot I had an alarm set for that time. Stop, alarm. Stop. Wait. This isn't the napping club! Ironically, that was my nap alarm that just went off. Aha! So there is a napping club! Did you really stay up late to write your poem? I'm not sure I like what you're implying, but I assure you that's the case. You know, now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know, you know. You said you know twice there. Don't change the subject, mister! You'll need to get used to club work! Uh, five more minutes. I waved my hand at her and drooped my head down, pretending to fall back asleep. Holy, I'm serious! I look back up at her. Yeah, I know, I know. Believe it or not, I do actually really appreciate you looking out for me, Sayori. <laughs> That's what I do best. That being said, however, what about you? You look out for me, but who's looking out for you? I know you've been oversleeping every day, you're right. <laughs> not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... it's a secret! Uh-huh, sure. Come on! At least give me the benefit of the doubt! I mean, I would, but you haven't exactly been hiding it. Huh? Siri blinks at me. I think she's wondering exactly how much I know, but also doesn't want to let it show just in case. Look, you were clearly in a rush this morning. Your hair is sticking out all around here. Huh. I point towards her hair at specific spots where they seem unkempt. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. Uh-huh. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. There's a toothpaste stain on your collar right here. I try to wipe off the stain with my finger. But, but, but nobody will ever notice that. I did, and I'm not the most observant person. But it's also one of those things that people probably aren't likely to point out, since they probably don't want to embarrass you. But as your friend, I don't care about embarrassing you. Oh, wait. I can never remember if there are two R's and two S's in embarrassing, but I'm pretty sure there are. So I'm gonna say that's embarrassing. Hey, you meanie! And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori, did you sleep in your clothes? Well, that's super mean! Look, if it's all right here... I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. As I go to straighten her blazer, our eyes lock. At first it seemed innocent enough, but then her eyes started to water a little. Holly, I feel weird, like I've been here before. I suddenly feel a chill run down my spine. I can't explain it, but something feels off. Just as I'm about to say something, we hear it. Everyone jumps all at once at the sudden explosion. The school's automatic fire alarm system starts going off, and we can hear students start pouring into the hallways. Oh, what's going on? Was that an explosion? Just then, the others run to the front of the room. Whoa, did you hear that? That sounded so cool! Monica sighs. Monsky, this is the time for jokes. I was joking, I just meant it sounded... Natsuki trails off when she realizes there's no saving that. It certainly sounded close. We can talk about it later. Alright, now we should probably follow everyone else's lead and make for the exit. Monica and I exchange worried glances, since neither of us has any idea what's going on right now. But whatever it is, we've just gone completely off script. Ellie! Ellie's right! Everyone move out! We can meet up at the fountain in the courtyard! It's then that I feel a sudden pain in my gut. I'm not sure if I'm having a heart attack or a sudden bout of nausea or both, but suddenly everything starts spinning. Am I going to die? What's happening to me? 